Critters, welcome to today's 3D print. No live stream tonight. It's going to rain Friday, and I was supposed to go pick up a mattress that I need. Uh, I broke mine, and so I have to go pick it up today. Or I won't be able to get it. <laughs> you know, $350 mattress for 60 bucks. so yeah, I'm going to get it. Um, I need an extra firm twin size mattress because of my weight. But anyway, here is the 101 Hero video. Um, it's an interesting printer, but don't buy it unless you want to tinker with it. <laughs> it's junk. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a link down below if you desperately want it for some reason, but um, it's, I do not suggest purchasing this printer. Um, if you want a cheap and usable printer, consider the little Easy 3 Nano. I mean, I'm getting some beautiful prints out of it, and the only thing I did was add a big fan to it. Why such a big fan? Because it was eight bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and it solves the problem for $8. So, yeah, that's a usable printer, and that's only 120 bucks. But that's it. Enjoy the video, and I will see you on, hopefully, Saturday. To today's 3D print. Today we are going to play with something a little interesting. I bought this myself off eBay. Links are down below. It was $104 from an American shipper. So this came from Vermont. And I got it in like four days. I was really surprised by that. Um, I understand it's not a very good printer. <laughs> but it's $104. To the best of my knowledge, it is literally the cheapest brand new printer you can buy. I don't think any other printer is available except for used or refurbished for under $104. There's also a link for about $105, $106 for international um, buyers. And for about $110, you could buy one where you could pick the color because it's available in blue, orange, green, or yellow. I would just get the cheapest one. <laughs> so stay tuned while we tear this apart. Here's what's inside the box. I'm guessing this is the base. I'm guessing this is two pieces. Yep, top and bottom. The control box unit with the, I'm assuming, a Melzy board inside. The three pylons for the Delta. The hot end effector head. It looks like it is direct drive. And power supply. Um, for the international users, I have links for international purchase down below if you decide you want to play with one of these. <laughs> um, it is only available with the U.S. power plug, as far as I can see. They're out of stock everywhere on any other plug. But this power supply is 240 volt compatible, so you can just convert the plug and you'll be fine. So here's all the goodies that come in the box. So basically, instead of having a case for the brains of the computer, they have the most minimal case you can possibly have. It is literally just the Melzy board inside here. And then everything plugs into it externally. So all your limit switches and all that stuff plug into it here. Your SD card and power plug in here. You have a light. I'm, a, I'm guessing that switches to start a print and you have to name the print a specific file name. I, I'll read the directions. We'll see what happens. But um, pretty cool. So let's get going. Your top and bottom are identical with your glass plate. Here, each of your pylons is identical. This will all slot together and be held in with all the screws that are included. I'm guessing these screws are for holding the plastic together. I accidentally hit the stop button for the camera. And I'm guessing these screw are for the effector arms. Because there are six of them and that's how many you need for the effector arm. So these little geared stepper motors. Belt drive. It all looks fine to me. I don't expect this to print very well. But if it prints at all, I'll be happy. I mean, it's a $100 printer. That's... And it feels pretty darn rigid. I mean, this does flex, but it's it's more rigid than I thought it would be. I'm actually a little surprised by that. And considering I'm going to be going 10 or 15 millimeters per second, I don't I don't anticipate flex being a problem. <laughs> oh, very simple assembly. You screw the top in. You screw the bottom in using the um, six screws up here, 12 screws down here into the identical plastic parts. You then screw your screws into your effector head. The longer 15 millimeters M5s, that's what you use for that. I chose to zip tie all these cables together to make them a little neater. And I also zip tied the bottom to make it neater. I also drilled a couple holes through the plastic frame with a zip tie here so that I can hold that on there nicely. Make sure you can actually see me. And um, it's working out pretty good. So the next step is to connect the brain box. If the motor, the motors are in order counterclockwise, a, B, C. If that's not right, if it needs to be A, B, C, all I have to do is swap A and C. So we'll see. There's nothing in the directions that tells me which way to put those. 
brain box will connect. Bring this wiring harness down, bring this wiring harness over, connect the brain box. I'm wondering if I can fit the brain box. I wonder if I can, can I fit it underneath? Nope. Maybe if I remove it from this, I can make a new bottom for this to put the Melzy board inside. I might actually do that because I think that would actually look pretty cool. And I also think this thing could probably run off a battery pretty easily because I doubt this takes very much power. But now it's time to wire it up. The wiring is actually pretty easy. The board is set so you start here on the top with all the connections and you just start counting up letters. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I got to check the direction again, but it's either H, I, J or H, I, J. I think it's H here. So I think you flip it over and then it's H, I, J. And that is listed in the directions. Actually, I'm going to check right now. Uh, no, H starts out here. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So start on the outside. And all the wires are marked with letters. So you just connect to the appropriate letter and you are good to go. Stay tuned while I connect everything. The, the Melzy board inside the printer. Pretty simple board. All your connections. X, Y, and Z. Actually, X, Y, and Z. That's interesting. Your button to start it. Your USB port switch. Your SD card extension here. That's pretty neat. So I have it attached to the front here. I also added some zip ties to the arms because there's a lot of slop in this effector. And now there's almost no slop. So I think that's actually going to improve things quite a lot. Oh, first print. It's garbage. When I tell you, this Marvin has seen some crap. This Marvin has seen some crap, okay? But it is recognizable as a Marvin. And I think most of the issues are from slop. So once I get rid of the slop, I think this will actually be a kind of halfway decent, a usable printer. It's never going to make fantastic prints, but I think it will make prints. So stay tuned. Well, Critters 101 Hero, as you can hear, it's damn near silent. I was really surprised by that. And it turns out the slop that was causing bad prints is also the slop that was causing noise. I put a zip tie around the three sets of um, effector arms, pinned it on one arm so it wouldn't slide down, but left it loose on the other arm, and that tightened them up, got rid of almost all of the slop. So I went from getting this mediocre print to getting this almost passable halfway decent print. Come on autofocus. There we go. A little bit better. There we go. That's almost passable. The artifacts that I'm seeing I think are related to going too slow. I think it's heat buildup causing extrusion issues. So I've increased the speed to 15 millimeters per second and I also turned off the per layer minimum speed requirement. So that even if it's doing a small layer, it's not going to slow down even further. Um, I think that will help and it does look quite a bit better. Now it's printing. I also lowered the temperature to 190 Celsius, a 10 degree drop, because I think my issues are heat related. So we shall see. I am now printing a 150% Marvin. Will this printer ever win any printing awards? Oh no. <laughs> It would need some upgrades that would make it into a $150 printer, at which point you could just buy a $150 printer. But it can be made to work. And not entirely uselessly. I mean, I'm actually surprised. And it's it's so incredibly light and small. I mean, I can even turn this thing upside down while it's printing and it just doesn't care. Although I think I just messed it up. Oh no, I didn't. But that layer is messed up. A little bit of warping, I think. But um, not bad. I mean, it's a cute little printer. It's 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 interesting to toy with for a hundred bucks. Um, that's it. I'll add some pictures at the end of some of the prints that I get out of it. You can see how crude they are, how nice they are, however it comes out. But um, not entirely horrible. So stay tuned. I will see you guys later.